camp layout. In chapter 2 begin with the layout of the camp and its guidelines on the east, Judah's divisions encamped under their standard, along with the both tribes of Ishaga and Jebelon. The Lord also identified the leader of each tribe. Total number in the east was 186,400. On the south, Reuben's divisions encamped under their standard, and the tribe of Simeon camped next to them, and the tribe of Gad in Tram. The total number in the south was 151,450. In the west, Ephraim's divisions encamped under their standard, and next to them, the tribe of Manasseh and the tribe of Benjamin encamped. The total number in the west was 108,100. In the north, Dan's divisions encamped under their standard, and the tribe of Asher encamped next to them and beside them. The tribe of Naphtali, the total number in the north was 157,600. These were the 12 Israelite tribes. The number in all those in the camps by their divisions was 603,550, as stated in chapter 2, verse 32. Look at the tribes in red in each direction. Can you guess their commonality? They were the first born. Judah was the spiritual firstborn. How about Reuben? He was the physical firstborn. Ephraim was the blessed firstborn. Who was then? He was the firstborn of slaves. Bilhah's first son. Which tribe was missed in the camp? Levi's. Where was their camp? For this answer, we need to understand their mission first as stated in chapter 1 verse 49 to 51. You must not count the tribe of Levi or include them in the census of the other Israelites. Instead, appoint the Levites to be in charge of the tabernacle of the testimony over all its furnishings and everything belonging to it. They are to carry the tabernacle and all its furnishings. They are to take care of it and encamp around it. Whenever the tabernacle is to move, the Levites are to take it down, and whenever the tabernacle is to be set up, the Levites shall do it. They were responsible for the tabernacle. Therefore, they encamped just around the tabernacle inside the twelve tribes' camps. In the east, Moses, Aaron, and his sons encamped, and they served as priests. As stated in chapter 3, verse 10, they covered the holy things when the camp set out. It was presumed that they were to carry the ark as stated in Joshua chapter 3 verse 14. So when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan, the priest carrying the ark of the covenant went ahead of them. The three sons of Levi encamped in the other directions with their own duty. In the south, the Kohatite clans encamped and their duties were to take care of the ark, the table, the lampstand, the altars, the articles of the sanctuary, and the curtain, as stated in chapter 3, verse 31. As stated in chapter 4, verse 15, they carried the holy furnishings and all the holy articles after Aaron's sons finished covering them, but they could not touch the holy things. All this work was under the direction of Eleazar, the third son of Aaron, the priest. In the west, the Gershonites encamped. They were to carry all coverings and curtains, as stated in chapter 4, verse 25 and 26, and all their duties were under the direction of Itamar, the fourth son of Aaron, the priest. In the north, the Merorites encamped. They were to carry all structures and related ones, as stated in chapter 4, verse 31 and 32. They also served under the direction of Itamar, the false son of Aaron, the priest. A significance was that the Levites had to be between 30 to 50 years of age to do this work, as stated in chapter 4, verse 23. How did they carry those things? Did you find the answer to this? 
Open chapter 7, verse 9. But Moses did not give any to the Quartites because they were to carry on their shoulders the holy things. Look at the verse 7 and 8. They carried the holy things by oxen carts. Why did Moses give the Merorites more carts and oxen? Double that of the Gershonites. Their portions to carry were much heavier than coverings. This layout was based on the God's oriented life. Marching. This is about the Israelites' order of marching in the desert. Before that, let's take a few minutes to summarize the camp layout. All things of the tabernacle were divided into four ark, instrument, tent, and structures. Who were responsible for each of them when the Israelites set out and encamped at a place? Then carried each of them, as stated Joshua chapter 3 verse 14 and 1 Kings chapter 8 verse 3. The priest carried the ark, but according to Numbers chapter 3 verse 31, the Kohathites carried it. There were two possibilities. The one was that only Levites carried it. The other was both of them carried it. Personally, I won't go with the first one that only priests carried it. How did they carry? On shoulder and by carts. Directions of each division to carry an its standard. Then the first sons. Now let's see the procedure of marching. The priest covered all holy things and the Levites disassembled tents and fences, etc. And the ark led the march which was followed by the East Divisions, then Levites carried the tents and structures by carts. The South Divisions followed them, again Levites, Quartite, carried the holy instruments on their shoulder. Then the West and North Divisions marched in turn. They set up by the first trumpet, and the South Divisions departed by the second trumpet. When did they leave the desert of Sinai? They left for Kadesh on 20th of the second month. Why didn't they leave on the first month? Because of the Passover as stated in chapter 9 verse 10 and 11. The Lord gave a device those who had missed the Passover to keep it on the second month. This showed us the Lord's distinction and the Lord's driven lives. Census there were two senses in the beginning and end of the desert. The major purpose of both senses was to counter the men to serve in the army to attack enemies in the promised land. In addition to that, the second census had two more objectives checking the fulfillment of Numbers chapter 14 verse 30 and stated in chapter 26 verse 64 and distributing inheritance as stated in chapter 33 verse 54. Here take notice the changes of number of each tribe from the first to the second census. In the first census, Rachel's descendants were placed in the bottom three, but it was the second largest if it was clubbed at Joseph's sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. Both Ephraim and Naphtali reduced by a thousand. It was a little old as to why it happened. I presume that both of them were leaders in attacking their enemies, as stated in several passages. Simeon decreased the most. It was probably because a leader of the clan committed a sin with a Midianite woman and was killed by Phinehas as stated in chapter 25 verse 9. In addition to this, it was probably for the fulfillment of Genesis chapter 49 verse 7. This was probably a reason not to be included in the Moses blessing in chapter 33 of Deuteronomy. The decrees of Reubenites was probably due to the Korah's rebellion. The decrees of Simeonites was probably due to the adulterous. Manasseh increased the most among the tribes, and the Benjamin clan also increased, but they drastically decreased to just 600 because of the incident as seen in chapters 19 to 21. 
Total number of the Israelites decreased from 604,550 to 601,739 by 1,820. Let's see the decrease in a systematic way on the next slide. Changes All directions increased except the south. In the south, all three tribes decreased. In the east, all three tribes increased, but the west increased the most by 22,700. Balaam When Moabite came to Balaam and requested to curse the Israelites, he asked them to wait until he got the answer from the Lord. The Lord came to Balaam and said, do not go with them. You must not put a curse on those people because they are blessed, as stated in chapter 22, verse 12. Then the Moabites came again to Balaam, and he told them, Even if Balak gave me his palace filled with silver and gold, I could not do anything, great or small, to go beyond the command of the Lord my God, as stated in Chapter 22, verse 18. God came to Balaam and said to go with them and do only what I tell you, as stated in chapter 22, verse 20. This story seemed to be fine, but as stated in chapter 22, verse 22, the Lord was very angry when he went. Why was the Lord angry? Balaam went by the Lord's command, but he was not pure in following his command. Therefore the Lord was angry, as stated in chapter 22, verse 32. I have come here to oppose you because your path is a reckless one before me. Why did the Lord say that his path was a reckless one before him? Look at verse 13. He told the Moabites that the Lord has refused to let him go. This was wrong because in verse 12 the Lord had told him not to curse the Israelites. But he didn't tell this part because he wanted to get more money. To prove this, let's see more passages. In Numbers chapter 31 verse 16, they were the ones who followed Balaam's advice and were the means of turning the Israelites away from the Lord in what happened at the Peor so that a plague struck the Lord's people. This passage compared Balaam's deed as idolatry. In Deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 4, they hired Balaam to pronounce a curse on you. This stated that Balaam received a bribe. In next verse 23 verse 5, God wouldn't listen to Balaam but turned the curse into a blessing. In Joshua chapter 13 verse 22, the Israelites had put to the sword Balaam. This was also stated in Numbers chapter 31 verse 8 for vengeance on the Midianites. In 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 15 and 16, they have left the straight way and wandered off to follow the way of Balaam, son of Beor, who loved the wages of wickedness, but he was rebuked for his wrongdoing by a donkey. In Jude chapter 1 verse 11, they have rushed for profit into Balaam's error. In Revelation chapter 2 verse 14, Nevertheless I have a few things against you. You have people there who hold to the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to entice the Israelites to sin by eating food sacrificed to idols and by committing sexual immolarity. This is very interesting information to help understand Balaam's deed. But Balaam could not curse the Israelites and he told Balak, I must speak only what God puts in my mouth. Actually, it was hard to configure whether he pretended or not. Anyway, as stated in chapter 24, verse 2, the Spirit of God came upon him. As stated in chapter 24, verse 16 and 17, he blasted the Israelites. The oracle of one who hears the words of God, who has knowledge from the Most High, who sees a vision from the Almighty, who falls prostrate, and whose eyes are opened. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. 
a star will come out of Jacob, a scepter will rise out of Israel. He will crush the foreheads of Moab, the skulls of all the sons of Sheth. Why did the Lord assign three chapters from 22 to 24 to this story? This story was just before idolatry and adultery in chapter 25 and the second census in chapter 26. From a spiritual point of view, this was a warning to the Israelites for covet and idolatry in the promised land, and a prophesy of a blessing and Messiah for the Israelites. Thank you for watching.